Watch what he says. He says, love is patient and kind. Love suffers long. Love goes in knowing that I may be challenged in seasons where we got to stick and stay. Love goes in knowing that I've got to be patient. Now watch this. He says, love is patient and kind. I'm not just sitting here waiting for you to change. No, no, no. I'm going to be kind. Because a whole lot of folk are patient, but they ain't kind. Just mean as a dog fighting a rattlesnake. Just nasty all the time. Just want to remind, oh, I'll be glad when you get your crazy self together. No, no, no. I need kindness. Y'all act like you don't know. I said I need kindness. Now, I, maybe y'all won't admit this, but I need some kind folk in my life. Because I already know I ain't going to cross every T. I already know I ain't going to dot every I. I need you to be kind. And I'm going to tell you why you ought to be kind. Because Jesus was kind to you. With loving kindness have I drawn them. That's what the scripture says. Talk with me, somebody. Woo! You know what I love about God? Is that he don't beat me to make me change. When God is after making change in your life, he'll love you so much. He'll blow your mind with his kindness. He's so incredibly kind. Okay, y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But come on, parents, and, and some of you have been victim and villain of this. Uh, I remember, amen, the day when we used to get whippings. And, and, and oddly enough, some don't even try spankings. We ain't going to use that term. Beat down. Beatings. Beatings. I mean, uh, and you would think, some of y'all got so many whippings, you would think you'd have been an angel. But even after all them beatings, you still kept on doing crazy stuff. Huh? Because after a while, you start, you know, I, I don't know about y'all, but I started saying, okay, I know what's going to happen. He, he going to beat me. I'm going to be on lockdown for about two weeks. All right, just go and do your time. It wasn't about changing. Hear me. It wasn't about me changing my behavior. It was just getting through the punishment. I knew daddy was going to whip me. So, so, so my mother would say things like, all right, you know, your father see this report card. He already know because I done called him on his job. So all afternoon, you like this. You, you want to go to bed at 8 o'clock. <laughs> you know, I'm sitting there. I, I, I'm old enough now. Our, our, our report cards wasn't computerized. So I'm sitting there trying to study my, my teacher's penmanship so it don't look so distorted. I'm trying to figure out how to put a little dash in between that. No, the famous one was to try to slant the F and bring another line down. Okay, y'all. So I think somebody would know what I'm talking about. And, and, and so because I knew, <laughs> I knew that I was going to get whooped. And then my father would come in and do something that would just blow my mind. Son, I'm disappointed. And then he'd say something that just really messed me up. How can I help you get better grades? <laughs> I'm disappointed, but we're going to work through this. Do I, am I working long hours? Something, something's keeping you from studying? He asked my brother one time, you sleeping good at night? So, <laughs> is your bed okay? <laughs> me. Do I need to help you with your homework? I, I, when I come home, I'll start. And it was just jacking me up because I was prepared for a whipping. Dude is whipping. Hurt tonight. <laughs> Tell all my friends tomorrow in school, I'm going to be on lock. <laughs> Tell all the girls, don't call, please don't call my home. Ooh, don't call my home. But he messed me up because the goodness yeah. made me feel bad about wasting my time in school. Y'all gonna get this in a minute. The fact that he didn't whip me, but somehow he showed me love and kindness, I felt like I was disappointing him. See, that's what God does for us. Let me hasten on. That's what God, I could shout right there because a whole lot of times I've been guilty. Okay, y'all sitting here like you don't know what I'm talking about. But in spite of you, he kept a roof over your head. Mm, yeah, mm. 
I didn't cross the T's, I didn't dot the I, but he kept on waking me up every morning. You didn't give your tithe, you didn't pay your offer, you didn't do any of that, but he kept the blessing coming in it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? He didn't take from you anything. It, okay, y'all y'all acting like you really the, I need some real folk to talk to. You promised him you wouldn't, and you did it again, and God, he, almost like he ignored it. He just let you get by with it. It's because he knew, uh, the Bible says the Lord is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness, but he is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but all would come into repentance. I love him because he's so long-suffering. He's just hoping, Lord God, this time he's going to get it right. This time he going to bring it around. This time, Lord, uh, oh God, this time he going to bring it in. This time she going to turn that thing. She going to turn that corner. He, says long, uh, he said love is long-suffering, is patient, is kind. He said it's not envious, it's not boastful, it's not arrogant. It's not arrogant. It's not arrogant. Love is not arrogant. Have you ever seen people, it is all about them? Oh God, they're the most hardest people to deal with. You can't, if they do anything for you, they want it broadcast, they want it on the screen. It's just, mm -hmm. you're almost afraid to ask folk for anything or for them to do for you because you know they're so boastful, they're so proud, they're so arrogant. Oh, God. Uh, have you ever, have you ever, I had a, a situation a couple weeks ago and I asked a friend to do something for me and their the whole demeanor about it, their whole demeanor, it was through their job. Now, it was a simple thing. It didn't cost them no money, anything. It was just a simple, but they, but they, but, I, but because they knew I needed it, their attitude became arrogant and boastful and superior well I had had my fill and I had taken the last condescending text I was going to take and I just simply picked up the phone and said never mind don't worry about me ever come on Chris ever 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 don't worry it ain't don't worry about it you all right? I'm good for life. Well, I'm really sorry. Don't matter. Because once you make me feel bad about something I need, we not the friends. You don't need people in your life that going to make you feel like you begging. Deliver me from relationships and I got to feel like I'm begging you to be my friend and Begging you to like me and begging you to hang out. Baby, if it, ain't, if it don't fit, don't force it. Just me. All right. I thought y'all would know. Y'all such a worldly church. Everybody at this altar, as soon as I finish, I promise you. Y'all just know too many. Lord, I'm just too many. So look where he brought me from. Glory to God. <laughs> Love is not rude. Love you know, real love don't need its own way. See, when you really love, when you, whatever you're part of, if it's a marriage, if it's a family, if it's a friendship circle, if it's a ministry, if it's your job, love don't, when you really love it, love them, you don't need your own way. You ain't got to have all the answers just because you're in the group all the time. Newsflash. Your idea may not be the one we use this time. And you got to be set free from a need. You know, ain't nothing worse than to see folk don't get their way, they just go to pouting. Oh, Lord. We rehearsed that song. Why we ain't singing my... Are we really going through that today? Y'all quiet. It's I was prepared to do this. It ain't your show. You may have the right idea. It might be the wrong time. See, see, you're going to blow your marriage. Y'all better hear me. You're going to blow your relationship. Always got to be right. Oh, this ain't going so quick. This ain't going good, Lord. Please help me get to the good part. He says, he says, he says love is not rude. Love does not need its own way. And love is not quick to go off. Love. <laughs> I don't even want to elaborate. You mean to tell me 
Folk got to pray three days and fast three nights before they approach you because they don't know what spirit you go. They got to watch you for a couple weeks of service just to say hi because they don't know what. I need to talk to him about something, but I'm just. So they, the whole time, how you doing? I got something on my mind. Because they know by history, every time they say something to you, you're a walking ticking time bomb. How are you going to represent Jesus always going off? See, the kindness of God, don't, don't talk about you saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and on your job, you got the reputation. Child, you better not say nothing. You know she's a, see, they ain't say it, they say it. You saved. That's why some of y'all, if your coworkers came to church and see you, they'd be like, You be the talk the whole rest of the week. No, I'll go a little closer. Some of y'all, if your family come. I know auntie ain't carrying on in church like she loved the Lord. And, can't, and every time, okay, never mind. I don't cuss, but y'all don't push me. You are, I mean, every time something happens, you always got to go off. You kill, listen, we kill our witness in the earth when we have a short fuse. Well, I'm sorry, just, just the way I am. My mama's like that. My grandma's like that. That's just how I am. Y'all just got to deal with it. Who said we got to deal with it? Well, that's just the way I was raised. That's the way I was, I was brought up in that. And you save any man, if any man, be in Christ. Y'all ain't talking to me. He's a new creature. Huh? So if he makes things new, the thing that I ought to bring to him is my old habits. See, the old folks sang a song and said, I gave him my old filthy garments, and he gave me a robe of pure white. See, I don't have nobody from the old church. Here. See, see, I'm telling you right now, the Holy Ghost doesn't come to make you jump and shout alone. That's your response to the joy that you feel in your soul. But the Holy Ghost ought to come to make you better. The Holy Ghost ought to come. Salvation ought to come to help you work with and navigate through the parts of you that are not seemly and are not comely. I don't know about y'all, but I don't just have one thing God's working on. I got some things that I need him to work on. And I don't need the Holy Ghost to make me sweat and holler in church. I need the Holy Ghost to calm my tongue down. I need the Holy Ghost to put my, amen, my temper down. I need the Holy Ghost, amen, to control me from not slapping somebody. No, I don't slap. I need the Holy Ghost to keep me from shooting somebody. Y'all ain't going to help me. Y'all y'all fool around all that cussing and rolling your eyes. I don't do all of that. I ain't going to waste no time at that. I need the Holy Ghost to calm me down so I don't hurt you for real. Y'all ain't going to help me. That's what, y'all need the Holy Ghost for other things. I need the Holy Ghost. I need the Holy Ghost to control my tongue. Come on. I don't know what you need them for. Some of you are up. Woo, give me a good bump. But I need a little bit more than that. Because when church is over, I need something that's got the reins on me. And got a bit in my mouth. Woo! And when I start to buck and say, whoa. 